program right so where is this second fine so uh, what are the metabolic processes and what are basically essential element can you tell me so can you repeat what are the essential elements can you tell me what are the essential elements do you have any idea Oh, sorry. Okay. Look, essential elements are okay. If you want to note it down, you can note it down, right? I'll explain uh, for you. Essential elements are basically those elements. Uh, if they are not present, then the basic metabolic reactions cannot go on, right? They will stop over there. So if they are not present, then the basic metabolic reactions will not be uh, carry forward. It. They will stop over there, right? So what are the metabolic reactions? my second question what are the metabolic reactions i saw keep on telling me any idea the citric acid cycle yeah they are the natural cycles uh let me tell you what are the metabolic reactions actually so look all those reactions all those chemical reactions or rather than all those chemical reactions some of the all those chemical reactions which are going on inside any living organism are called metabolic reactions uh, if we talk about the plant let's uh, let's say uh, photosynthesis so right so that is a metabolic reaction so all those reactions which are going inside the plant they are called metabolic reaction right so uh, they are uh, they can they can't be completed without the these essential elements right so if you want please note it down uh essential elements are those elements first point essential elements are those elements which have a specific which have a specific physiological which have specific physiological and which have specific physiological and a structural role without which without which metabolic reactions without which metabolic reactions cannot be completed in the plant right ravia you are late today so yes sir i'm so sorry i had lost track of time okay no issue we have just started i was just telling you so uh, we are last class we have completed the transport in the plant and in this class we have started with the essential element your next chapter of the plant physiology part right so uh, i was just telling what are the essential elements so essential elements are those elements uh, without which plant cannot complete their life cycle and their structural and physiological reactions cannot go on right so uh, for sake of example metabolic processes in the plant let let's say photosynthesis uh, crepe cycle C three cycle, C four cycle. We will study all these cycles, right? Now the next point is this is very important for your examination point of view, right? What are the criteria of essentiality of element, right? Uh, I'll I'll discuss one by one. What are the criteria of uh, 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 essentiality? Well, like on the on what basis we can say? Let's say. Uh, if i say if i say you that iron is uh, essential element so what are the basis behind it why i am saying right so there are certain criteria behind the essentiality of element the first criteria is there 
that they are absolutely um, uh, indispensable for growth of the plant right so they are absolutely required for the growth and reproduction of the plant right and uh, let me write it down in clear way so that uh, even you could note it right let me discuss one by one let me rewrite it again so that it become very clear for you there are certain criteria of essentiality of element and i'll discuss one by one with you and you have to note it down actually because this is very important uh, i have seen the question in medical examination that there are certain uh, which of the following is criteria for essentiality of element which of the following is not the criteria for the essentiality of element so you can get that kind of the question so first criteria right uh it is it is required for it is required for growth of plant without these element the growth of the plant is not possible plant won't grow right even uh, they can die at the young stage as well. right the second one they are directly not indirectly they are they are directly involved directly involved in the metabolic reaction in metabolic reaction of plant right is that legible to you are you able to read it like whatever i am writing is it okay yes yes sir okay great the third thing is that plant is unable to plant plant cannot complete its reproductive cycle and vegetative growth without this right so plant can't complete a reproductive a reproductive and vegetative growth vegetative growth in absence of of these elements if any of these element is complete plant won't be able to complete its vegetative growth or a reproductive development right the element you cannot replace the calcium with any another element right the element cannot be replaced by the element can't be replaced by by any other element any other element right that is the fourth criteria the fifth criteria the absence if these elements are absent they will cause some disorder in the plant right the absence of element element will cause disorder in plant there will be some deficiency some demerit of uh, the plant right and the next one the element and if suppose that if there is a deficiency of magnesium so we can remove the deficiency with the supply of the magnesium not with any other element right the the last point the deficiency deficiency can be corrected by supply of 
that element. Means it, it is not the permanent uh, disorder, permanent deficiency. If you will supply it, it will be recorrected. So these are the six criteria behind the essentiality of the element. Is that clear? And yes, you have to remember that. Okay. So clear all the point? Tabia? Yes. Okay. Fine. So role of these elements, right? This is so how many uh, essential elements are there? There are total 17 essential elements, right? 17 essential elements. Uh, Just a minute, one more. One more thing which you need to note it down. Micro element and macro element. Macro and micro element basically a micro or micro element those which are required in larger amount or larger quantity they are called macro element right so essential element there are total 17 essential elements. and we have divided these 17 essential element on in two grade right so uh, we can say there are there are Total seventeen essential elements, right? All those seventeen essential elements they have been categorized in two groups, right? Macro element and micro element. Macro element. Micro element. So, macro element, what is the criteria for the macro element? What is the criteria for the micro element? Right? So, uh, for the micro element, they should be, they should be present 10 millimole, 10 millimole per kg. Or one to ten milligram per gram per gram of dry matter. Dry matter of plant. What does it mean? It means suppose that there is a plant, right? And we dehydrate it, means we remove the all the water of that plant part, right? So this element should be 1 milligram to 10 milligram between 1 milligram to 10 milligram dry matter of per gram dry matter of plant, right? If there is a 1 gram dry matter of that plant, organic matter of that plant, it should present 1 gram to 10 grams. Then we will call it macro. Element. So there are certain micro, micro element. Uh, in the category of macro elements are, let me write it down. There are some structural component. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen nitrogen phosphorus potassium sulfur magnesium and calcium and calcium so they are the macro element right and uh, then micro element so what's the, what is the criteria for micro element? So they are they should be present less than less than 10 millimole per kilogram or 1.0 milligram per gram. It should be less than this one, right? Per gram 
of dry matter right so they should be present if you have the one uh, gram of dry matter of the plant they should be present less than one gram right then they are they will be called micro elements and for example micro elements iron fe zinc mn manganese boron copper molybdenum chloride and nickel you have to remember or micro or micro element you will get the question if you will solve the previous year question paper you will find number of the time this question i beyond which of the following is not micro element which of the following is not micro element or which of the following is micro or macro element that kind of the question you will get you will see that kind of the question frequently asked question right uh, iron is uh, found uh, in like uh, less than 1 mg per gram however essentiality is uh, discovered that this is uh, this is this work like uh, some macro element right so that is a specialty with the uh, iron otherwise iron comes under the micro elements only right so is that clear or not clear tell me Yes. Yes. Sir. Please note down some statement. There are two point. Uh, ninety six point ninety six percent of ninety six percent of dry matter of plant. Ninety six percent. dry matter of plant is formed of 96% of dry matter of plant is formed of is formed of carbon hydrogen and oxygen why why carbon hydrogen and oxygen why because they are the they are the structural element means they make the structure of the plant because they are the structural element <clears throat> is that clear yes sir so you have to cram this one right which is the micro which is the macro and what is the criteria being then there is a role of these elements so this is a pdf right whatever i have underlined that thing only you need to remember rest of the thing you can forget right but only those thing which is uh, required or which is uh, which you need to remember so let's start with this pdf right just sorry so uh, macro and macro element i have just discussed with you now carbon hydrogen and oxygen they make the body of the plant means they are called the structural element so basically they make the structure of the plant that's why they are called structural element so cell is i have already told you that 96% of the plant part of the plant body is made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen so these plant they make the structural framework uh, and the protoplasm so an oxygen is also the electron acceptor so you need not to remember that thing right now we'll discuss in uh, later in the uh, part of the uh, photosynthesis part right so they are they make the structural framework of the plant so hence they are very important and uh, this one so they make the structural framework of plant so they are uh, they uh, they are the component part right so we can say they are the building block of the plant body if they are they will become deficient generally they do not become deficient if they will de become deficient plant will not survive the second one is the nitrogen right nitrogen is responsible for chlorophyll cell nucleation means dna and rna form vitamin formation hormones formation right 
amino acid formation protein formation so nitrogen is also very important part after the carbon hydrogen and oxygen right this is the element which is after carbon hydrogen and oxygen this is the element which is the major component of the fertilizer right so what will happen if the deficiency of nitrogen late flowering right flower will not come at the proper stage so flowering will become late right chlorous chlorosis appear at the first in the older leaf what will happen the older leaf will uh, will become the deficient of the chloroplast right so that the chlorosis will be, uh, appear clear now the phosphorus so phosphorus is also part of nucleic acid means it's part of dna and rna one more thing it is also part of energy molecule atp nad and nadp right so it's a part of energy particle so what will happen that will call poor growth of especially root and leaf will appear dull green that is the symptom right leaf will appear dull green and uh, the, uh, the they will they, it will cause poor growth of the leaf right potassium potassium is like it is associated with sodium and potassium pump right we will discuss sodium and potassium pump in the part of physiology part, right uh, and uh, this one neural system part right in neural system there is a sodium potassium pump so we will discuss that thing in detail so <clears throat> this is responsible for opening and closing of stomata right so stomata open and closes due to sodium and potassium pump what will happen they will it will cause yellow and shriveled margins of leaf what is the shriveled margin of leaf i have uh, made this diagram so this is the shriveled margin of the leaf leaf will become shriveled in the margin intervenal chlorosis between the vein there will be uh, chloroplast will disappear right so that is intervenal chlorosis calcium uh calcium is responsible for growth of root and shoot tip means basically the calcium is responsible for cell division so wherever the new part is formed means meristematic tissues are there like formation of new shoot is taking place formation of new root is taking place the calcium is required on those parts right so it is required for the cell division enlargement translocation right so what will happen the chlorosis af young leaf young will be leaf will become yellow means chlorophylls formation will not take magnesium right magnesium is also part of the chlorophyll right and it is the binding component of the ribosome yes we will discuss in uh, cell biology part right the ribosomes you must have listened about the ribosomes are made up of two sub units a small sub unit and larger sub unit a smaller and larger sub unit remains connected with the help of magnesium and we call that magnesium bridge right so magnesium is important for the uh, uh, ribosome binding okay so uh, what will happen uh, it is it, it will cause necrosis what is the necrosis aisha and rabia tell me what is the necrosis <coughs> tell me what is the necrosis note it down necrosis means cell death necrosis means cell death right so that will cause death of cells in the leaf right so it will cause necrosis and formation of purple pigment purple anthocyanin pigment right where in the leaves so formation of purple pigment okay sulfur what is the role of the sulfur sulfur is important for the vitamin like thymine and biotin right and uh, it increases the root development increases the nodule formation in legume what is the <coughs> importance of legume formation tell me what is the importance of legume formation aisha um, can you tell me what is the importance of legume formation 
legume formation look leguminous plant what are the leguminous plant like uh, pulses are the leguminous plant. and leguminous plant there are certain nodules you must have studied there are certain nodules in the root and they these nodules are responsible for the uh, uh, nitrogen fixes right so uh, without presence of the sulfur nodule formation will not take place in the pulses right that is the uh, so what will happen if the deficiency of the sulfur they will cause leaf curl they will become curl that is very important this question and there less juice content in the citrus fruit and reduce nodule uh, nodulation in nodule formation in legume so this question i been mean, aware whatever i i did a tick, uh, i have tick with the double tick they are the question which have been asked or they can be asked right iron iron is needed for the synthesis of chloroplast and protein so the chlorophyll and carotenoid synthesis carotenoid means vitamin a synthesis right what will happen in the deficiency uh, they may be the deficiency may be localized to the single leaf or branch because it have the limited mobility so you have to remember the iron have limited mobility means they are not mobile element right translocation takes place very hard come to the manganese they are the component of the oxygen evolving complex right they are the complex on oxygen evolving complex that complex which is responsible for evolution of oxygen photosynthesis manganese made that part right and uh, it is also uh, this is also uh, helpful in respiration so what will happen if the deficiency of manganese is there it will cause gray spot due to the chlorosis and necrosis in intervenous zone right so that is the uh, symptom for it molybdenum have been asked i have made a star that's why already made the star molybdenum uh, it is required for the nitrogen fixation them it activate the enzyme nitrate reductase this is the question absence of the molybdenum it causes whip tail disease of the cauliflower right come to next one boron boron uh, it is essential for the meristematic activity meristematic activity means cell division right pollen tube formation right so what will happen if the deficiency of boron is there death of the stem and root apice means the apex part where the new root and the new leaves are formation is taking place so they will cause the death of the stem and root apice right hard rot of the and brown hard of the turnip takes place because of the boron deficiency these are the name of the disease you have to remember the name of this copper copper is responsible for electron transport in photosynthesis right this is the question this has been for it causes the die back of shoe it's a type of disease right then skin splitting of the that is skin splitting of the citrus citrus means lemon and all that lemon orange and all that they are the citrus fruit so skin get split split out right and this is also called exanthema right exanthema right so that causes the this question have been asked right molybdenum have been asked zinc zinc is a component in dole acetic acid what is the dole acetic acid that is called oxen right and uh, it causes the whip tip of maize and khara disease of the rice right chlorite it is also the part of oxygen evolving complex because of this deficiency the leaves become uh, bronze in color right so this was all about the element its uh, function and the symptom of deficiency you have to cram there is no way to understand it right uh, whatever i have explained 
so you have to not cram each and everything you have to cram just cram just those things which have which i have underlined or highlight tell me guys aisha and rabia did you got it or not yes i got it yes sir uh, is, uh will you uh, cram it is it possible to remember or not tell me frankly don't hide anything is it possible for you to cram all these things because in this chapter i have even the starting of the chapter i have told you that there are very few thing which you need to understand there are uh, most of the thing you need to uh, actually cram it because you know in the biology uh, complete biology class i won't say anywhere uh, to you that you have to cram everything i'll ask you to understand each and everything but here i am just saying that you have to cram it because there is no way out tell me is it practically possible for you or not mm, uh, oh so because it's very lengthy <laughs> but you know you will definitely get the question from here so what you can do uh, only you have to focus on those uh, part uh, where i have highlighted and uh, what i can do what more i can do i'll just the highlight those element you at least you have to remember those element right let me highlight it with some other color at least minimum you have to remember those two those element deficiency and function the most important part, uh, or most frequently asked magnesium is the most important magnesium then molybdenum any how you have to remember that molybdenum right magnesium then molybdenum boron magnesium so 1 2 3 where is the calcium calcium is also very important calcium is it possible to remember all these four yes sir. yes sir at least you have to remember these four they are the most frequently asked element and read it at least 10 times right you will get most of the things you know uh, why i am not uh, like uh, you know i have just concised or uh, i have tried to make it uh, shorter as shorter as possible right uh, nothing can be shorter than this one right so at least uh, remember these five element their function and their deficiency and uh, uh, read all highlighted part at least 10 there may be chances that if i ask you what is the role of the calcium what is the deficiency symptom you won't be able to tell but when you will get in the form of the option form you will you will take it correctly if you will study it tight and tight right yes sir then what is the toxicity of element uh, you know anything if anything is present in the uh, particular range it is good for good for us suppose that let's say for the fat if the fat is not less or not more then the, it is uh, present in optimum amount in our body it is very good for us if it become less will become uh, uh, there will it will cause some deficiency in our body and it if it will become too much it will cause uh, obesity and it will cause number it will bring number of the disease in our body so everything in the range is good for us the same thing is with the element right element if they are present more than the, their uh, required amount they will cause some deficiency and this will cause toxic so what is the toxicity of uh, micronutrient when any micronutrient can become toxic for plant suppose that if any micronutrient reduces dry weight of the 10 uh, dry weight of the plant by 10% suppose that if this is present in excess amount and if it reduces the dry weight of the plant by 10% then we it will become toxic toxicity symptoms are difficult to identify you can't identify so 
for example manganese toxicity that appearance of brown spot so if the manganese will become toxic level at particular amount it will become toxic level when it will become toxic level when the uh, increase in the magnesium amount it will reduce it will reduce the 10% weight of the plant it will become toxic what will happen it will cause the appearance of brown spot in the plant right it inhibit the calcium translocation so what will happen it will restrict or it will stop the calcium translocation so what will happen the deficiency deficiency symptom of iron manganese and calcium will cause right so the symptom what is that there is a tech, you will you will think that this is the deficiency uh, the plant have the deficiency of iron magnesium and calcium but that is not true the plant have the toxicity of manganese right so that's why uh, the toxicity of any element cannot be recognized in any tell me is it clear or not yes sir okay um sir can you say uh, what is the second point of the magnesium toxicity this one this one no sir the previous three PDP. points in the three points the second one okay this second one, inhibit the calcium translocation yes sir okay uh, it means uh, suppose that there is a magnesium toxicity so uh, magnesium need to be translocated from one point to another point where it is need to translocate let me tell you so suppose that this is a plant This is the root of the plant, and we know all the elements are required uh, are absorbed by the root. Of the plant, right? So these are the leaves, and this is the growing tip. Right. So this is the meristematic part where the cell division is taking place. Why? because new part are formation are taking place and here new part formation meristematic activity are going on means cell division for cell division calcium is required it is very essential calcium is coming from where it is coming from the root only why because every element is absorbed from the root only right so calcium is coming from here suppose that if there is manganese toxicity right manganese will become in the toxic amount, right there is magnesium amen toxicity amen toxicity what will do it will stop the calcium translocation means calcium will not translocate it will not reach to the required place from where it will it is not repeated so what will happen the cell division will stop and you will think that this is the calcium deficiency but what actually what actually thing is going on actual thing is that this is the manganese toxicity did you got my point yes sir so it will inhibit calcium translocation means it will not allow the calcium to reach at the tip got it that is the meaning by okay sir thank you welcome aisha is it clear everything no great nitrogen cycle look this is the nitrogen cycle uh nitrogen is uh, basically the chief uh, excretory product of our body nitrogen pool is basically the uh, environment right means atmosphere so as we know that there are there is the 78 78% nitrogen in atmosphere night that is question that is very important question 99% of nitrogen of atmosphere it is converted into nitrogen of soil by the process of nitrogen fixation or nitrification right uh this this is done by bacteria that is called cyanobacteria or blue green cyanobacteria or blue green algae they fix 99% of 
nitrogen of the earth uh, uh, into soil right so 99% come here uh, where is the uh, rest of the 1% that rest of the 1% nitrogen comes due to lightning 1% comes to the light so come on that right nitrogen fixing bacteria they convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia right they will convert by atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia right by the process of nitrification right now nitrification oxidation takes place ammonia get convert into nitrate right nitrate uh, sorry nitrite nitrite in the same thing what is happening suppose that there are the animals these animals they are eating the plant they are eating the protein uh, their excretory product and their body after the death get decomposed and all the nitrogen part is converted into ammonia ammonium is converted after the oxidation it is converted into it is converted by so ammonia and ammonium by the process of nitrifying bacteria they convert it into nitrate right the nitrate is again oxidized right and convert into nitrite right nitrite is directly taken by the plant and they synthesize the amino acid this is the nitrogen cycle tell me is it clear yes sir okay uh, <clears throat> the next thing is that very important you need to cram there are certain free living bacteria means they are freely found in the environment right and they fix the atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrogen so first of them is azotobacter and bacteria they are the aerobic bacteria aerobic bacteria means they require the oxygen for their survival right so they are called aerobic bacteria these aerobic bacteria they they fix the atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrogen. they are free living bacteria they are freely found in the atmosphere of the soil second bacteria they are the anaerobic bacteria anaerobic bacteria means they do not require oxygen for their survival they can live without the oxygen as well. they are the bacillus and clostridium you have to remember at any cost right uh, annually they fix 10 to 25 kg nitrogen per hectare per annum right in one year they fix 20 10 to 25 kg atmospheric nitrogen per hectare right there are free living so these are the free living bacteria there are free living cyanobacteria or blue green algae anabina nostoc alusoria right alusoria sorry uh, alusoria they fix 20 to 30 kg nitrogen per hectare per year nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria symbiotic nitrogen fix so these bacteria are not found freely they remains associated with some plant some animal or something else right so there are nostoc and anabina nostoc and anabina they are the symbiotic bacteria they are found they make the symbiotic relationship with the lichen ficus root and azola and they fix the nitrogen first tell me both of you aisha and rabia what is this symbiotic relation with an example tell me. tell me guys um so the symbiotic relationship between like the example of it uh it's fungi and algae i fungi and algae very good they provide um necessary um materials to each other very good very good right right Uh, so let me make it more clear. What is the symbiotic relationship? So symbiotic relation. This symbiotic relationship is also known as symbiosis. Or it is also known as the mutualism. they all are the same word so the best example is that is the uh 
lichen lichen is plant body it is made up of two things at least combination of lichen is a type of plant but they are not the as a plant they are the combination of algae and algae is this is the green plant right algae is green green algae and this is fungi right what algae do algae perform the photosynthesis and make the food right what fungi do fungi absorb water water plus mineral algae pro fungi provide water and mineral to the algae right in return fung algae provide food to the fungi right both are helping each other this kind of the relationship where two organism both are helping each other none is harming to another this is called the symbiotic relationship or symbiosis Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. The fungi it provides shelter to the algae as well, right? Uh, fungi, uh, not the shelter actually. They provide the just water and mineral. Okay, sir. One more example. Let me tell you. Uh, another example of symbiotic relationship we will discuss this thing in uh, class 12 class levels in ecology part right uh, another example is mycorrhiza 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 is combination where uh, the root of cycas root of gymnosperm and uh, around, uh, around the root of gymnosperm there is a fungi right again the fungi provide root to root water plus mineral and in return root provide fungi to the food because fungi cannot make the food and these root cannot absorb the water properly right both are helping this combination is called so there is a because the root of the cycas and pinus basically root of the cycas and pinus so this is the root of the cycas and uh, pinus so these root and of the cycas and pinus they have a covering or mantle around them so there is a covering or mantle around them and this covering of or mantle is better to of the mycelia of fungi right so this is the covering or mantle of fungi so these both are the combination of these both are called symbiotic relationship is it clear aisha and rabia both of you is that clear yes sir okay great so again uh, symbiotic bacteria so symbiotic bacteria those bacteria which are found in symbiotic relationship right and symbiotic blue green algae right so they are nostoc and anamina they are the symbiotic bacteria they are found in lichen cycas root and ajola ajola is also called water fern right so they fix the atmospheric nitrogen into soil symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria rhizobium frankia and casuarina they are responsible for nitrogen fixing so you have to remember the name of the bacteria at any cost they are also the most important question they have been asked frequently clear For both of you, Aisha and Rabia. Yes. Yes, sir. Process of nodule formation. So, do you know what is the nodules, root nodules, or not? Tell me first this thing. Tell me frankly. Yes, sir. Okay. Great. so how does this nodule formation takes place this story have been given over here right so how does the nodule formation takes place let me explain it for you what is happening 
this is the legume so uh, legume there is a family sub family you must have studied in your 11th class syllabus there is a family fabaceae and in family fabaceae there is a sub family leguminaceae so all the plants which belong to leguminaceae sub family leguminaceae they have this kind of the fruit which is called legume right legume right and these legumes are uh, are the symbol of family leguminaceae right so in family leguminaceae sub family leguminaceae the legumes are found so what is the special thing with the the legume plant in the root they have some nodules right nodule ball like structure those are called nodules these nodules uh, fix the nitrogen these nodules are filled with the bacteria and they fix the nitrogen these bacteria fix the nitrogen right so that is the purpose of nodules right so basically nodules are responsible for nitrogen fixing purpose right how does this nodule formation takes place first in the starting days these are the root hair right this is the root and root hair around the root hair number of the bacteria get collected root hair are covered by free living bacteria and what is the name of bacteria the name of bacteria is rhizobia right this bacteria right uh, <clears throat> release the node factor this is very important this bacteria release the node factor not factor degrade the cell wall of the plant now after the degradation or damage of the cell wall these bacteria enter into root hair when they enter into root hair the root hair become short and they start curling process right due to curling of the root hair these bacteria start entering from the uh, uh, these uh, root hair right and they make an infection thread and this reaches into the inside the root cell right inside the root cell in special thread uh, reaches and uh, they reaches to the adjacent cell right then they reaches to the cortical cell in cortical cell they these bacteria uh, are released uh, uh, from an infection thread and uh, in cortical cell they really they start this uh, when these bacteria reaches to the cortical cell these cells release the auxins right and auxin causes the cell division due to cell division formation of so uh, this cortical cell is auxin and cytokinin and uh, because of release of the auxin and cytokinin the cell start dividing and formation of root nodule takes place right that's how the formation of root nodules takes place is that clear or not Yes. Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. So what you have to remember? What is the question? Nod factor. That question I've been asked, right? Cortical cell. Where does the infection thread reaches in cortical cell, right? Actually, these nodules have a special kind of the hemoglobin that is called LB, leg hemoglobin, that provide pink color to the, these nodules, and that is also. Fine. Yes, sir. Okay. Again, how does this enzyme work? Nitrogenase enzyme, right? So, nitrogenase enzyme is responsible for fixing atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. How does it work? uh this is the nitrogenase enzyme so very important thing nitrogenase and please note it down nitrogenase enzyme do not work in presence of nitrogenase enzyme do not work in the presence of oxygen it is anaerobic enzyme it is anaerobic enzyme full stop next point leg hemoglobin this one leg hemoglobin 
is found in leg hemoglobin is found in these nodules it make bond with oxygen and remove oxygen from nodule and remove oxygen from nodule that's why very important that's why it is also called ox oxygen scavenger that's why it is also called oxygen scavenger full stop next point in root nodule in root nodule in root nodule leg hemoglobin provide anaerobic condition for the functioning of for the functioning of nitrogenase enzyme full stop now look what is happening uh this did you got all those points which i have dictated to you or not if you have mm -hmm. any doubt please ask me got it so could you repeat the last one uh last one is that uh, nitrogen uh, leg hemoglobin provide anaerobic condition for nitrogenase and enzyme nitrogenase enzyme functioning did you call or uh, got all these point which i have uh, dictated yes sir yes sir great very good so look what is happening this nitrogenase enzyme first it will uh, capture two nitrogen atom from the uh, atmosphere and it will make bond with this so first time reduction will take addition of the nitrogen is reduction so reduction will uh, sorry uh, addition uh, nitrification so uh, nitrogen will be added on or here then first reduction will take place reduction means addition of hydrogen and two hydrogen and will be added first reduction then again second reduction will take place two more hydrogen and will be created added then third reduction takes place again two hydrogen and are are added so now what will happen the two ammonia molecule will be released and nitrogenase enzyme will be get free and will be reutilized that's how the formation of ammonia is taking place this ammonia will be converted into nitrate and nitrite after the oxidation that's how the nitrogen fixation is done in anaerobic environment uh, uh, with the help of nitrogenase uh, with the help of uh, nitrogenase enzyme tell me is that clear yes sir okay what is ammonification process look so conversion of uh, look means formation of ammonia how does it take takes place look uh, it is done by free living bacteria right and uh, after the death and decay of any organism right so how does it happen ammonification is the process in which protein breaks down into amino acid this is the generic formula of amino acid where r is the alkyl group and this is called amide group right this is amide group and r is alkyl group uh, organic acid plus uh, now this this amino acid is broken down into organic acid 
and ammonia right ammonia does not remain in the gaseous state rather than it changes into nh4 plus ammonium ion right now in the nitrification process the ammonia react with the oxygen and form the nitrate uh, uh, nitrate two hydrogen ion water plus energy again the nitrate is again oxidized and form the nitrite and energy is released and this nitrite form is taken by the plant that's how the nitrification is taken tell me go through with the reaction and tell me. So, can you explain it again, the abodification? Yeah, sure. What happened? Suppose that death and decay of any animal or plant is taking place. What bacteria will do? These bacteria will start eating those, means decomposing those part. Suppose that the older leaf has fallen down on the surface of earth. There are certain bacteria, free living bacteria. They break down, they start breaking down, eating down those leaves. And start rotting them. So what they will do, they will break down the protein part of that leaf into amino acid. Then amino acid is broken down into organic acid plus ammonia, right? Then what will happen? This ammonia will get oxidized. It will ammonia will uh, combine with oxygen, right? This ammonia, this one, this ammonia, it is oxidized. And two bacteria, Nitrococcus or Nitromonas, what will they? They oxidize it and they convert this ammonia into nitrate, hydrogen ion, water, and energy. Again, this nitrate, again, this nitrate is again oxidized with the help of nitrobacter and it is converted into nitrite. Nitrite is the form which is required by the plant. Plant take nitrogen in the form of nitrite and it is taken by the uh, plant. So uh, uh, that's how uh, the nitrogen fixation takes place. Tell me, is that clear or not? Yes, sir, it's clear. So we have completed the second chapter. The synthesis of amino acid that is not required for you. Uh, leave it. So you have to remember till here, till this point. You have to restudy this thin point. Tell me. Do you want me to start the next chapter or is it okay? One chapter is okay. I'll do whatever you say. So one chapter is fine. That is fine. Rabia? Yes, sir, I agree. Even, even, even I think that is fine. I, I, won't, I won't overload you people. Right. But you know, uh, honestly, do all the things, whatever I am telling you. Uh, believe on me, if you will keep on doing only that part which is required or which I say, you know, I won't tell you even a single point which is not required for your examination. At least you have to complete this part. And believe on me, if you will do this part, you will get, uh, you can you can crack the uh, neat examination. Like out of 90, I don't say that you will do now a 90 out of 90. If you will cover all those points which I have told you and covered with your NCRT, you will be able to complete 80, you will be able to attempt the 85 question out of 90. And believe on me, if you did more than 83 question, you will get the very good uh, college. So uh, that I expect that you, you have to cover. So uh, what you have to do, you have to cover all these points, right? all these uh, points, whatever I have dictated, and uh, whatever is there. And uh, after that, if you have, if you encounter, you have to do the previous year question as well, right? So do you have any book for the previous year question paper? No, sir. No? Okay. Uh, I'll ask uh, my team to provide you a PDF book, PDF, like where you will get the previous year question, the questions which have been asked in previous year. What do you have to do? At least you have to do the uh, uh, last uh, six year questions, right? 2017 onwards. Clear? Yes, sir. Fine. So are you, are you uh, uh, like uh, going through with any book as well? 
Um, sir, not yet, but I'll buy a guide after June when I go to India. Okay. <laughs> Fine. The same thing with you, Aisha? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, what I recommend you, uh, take, uh, there is a uh, uh, book uh, for exclusively for the medical examination. Uh, take, uh, uh, this one. there is a publication, MTG. Have you listened to that name? MTG publication? No, sir. So write it down. There is a publication, MTG. MTG. MTG publication, they publish a book with the name of Fingertip. Fingertip. Minimum, you must purchase Fingertip, MTG Fingertip of biology, for biology. For physics and chemistry, you must refer the uh, particular uh, faculty, who, whoever is teaching. Who is teaching in physics? Shahnawaz, sir. Okay, and uh, chemistry? Anil, sir. Uh, chemistry, oh, what is the name of the faculty? Don't know. Sir, for me, chemistry neat classes haven't started yet. Okay. So, uh, what do you have to do? You have to uh, purchase the MTG fingertip, minimum MTG fingertip, right? And the rest of the thing I'll keep on giving you. Fine. Any doubt? No, sir. Thank you, sir. No, sir. No doubt. Okay. So uh, collect the doubt for the next class, right? If you have from this chapter and the from previous chapter, we have completed two chapter, right? And uh, after two or three chapter, even I will take start taking the test. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, till, sir. Okay. So till the time, bye bye. Take care. Good night. Sir.